The question now is that the amendment be agreed to. I give the call to the member for Bowman. Speaker, thank you. And my support is unconditional for the Green Army Initiative, which has been a coalition flagship in the environment area now for a number of years, and finally in government coming to fruition. Deputy Speaker, regardless of where you come from Australia, the Green Army is an exceptional option for young Australians, whether they be in a gap year, graduates uh, or currently unemployed, uh, to get involved in local environmental projects of merit. In my area of Bowman, I speak with particular passion because virtually all of my 60 kilometres of uh, waterfront is mangrove. In fact, it's pretty hard to find a patch of Redlands uh, waterfront that is not mangrove. And of course, together with the beautiful North Stradbroke Island, there are seemingly limitless opportunities to protect, preserve and in fact enhance some of the environmental assets uh, that we have in Bowman, being a Moreton Bay fringe electorate. Of course, you just have to drive down any major road in a part of Australia where there's a significant nature corridor to know that there's almost limitless work to be done on this great continent when it comes to environmental improvement and enhancement. And at the same time, we don't seem to be able to match need with expertise. So many young Australians, hundreds of thousands of them, without at the moment meaningful work opportunities, a chance to train, a chance to upskill, a chance to work together in small teams and achieve something of worth. And the Green Army does that, building over three years to 15,000 participants. It will be the largest standing environmental army in Australia's history. I'm excited about it for a few reasons. And the first one is that this is very much locally driven. And sure, there will be a service provider responsible for organising, as well as a group that will typically identify the projects, uh, commonly councils uh, and the like. But what's really important is that communities can get together and actually rank the environmental tasks into uh, some form of priority and start working on them in a limited time frame over a number of weeks and ensure that that job is done. What we don't have is tailing on of, the, of this program uh, in a sort of a, an extended work for the dollar arrangement because this is very different to that and I need to emphasise that. Uh, the Green Army needs to be one of a number of options that young Australians can have. It will never be compulsory. Uh, it's obviously going to grow quickly each year up to, the, up to 2018 and I commend the Minister for having gained the extra resources to ensure that the Green Army continues. The challenge, and I put it out to every electorate, is to find the highest quality projects that you can. Of course, critics of this program will be saying that there's no point just mobilising people if they're not doing something of environmental benefit. Well, there's plenty of environmental potential in every electorate, even urban ones, where, of course, environment is most under threat. In my electorate, there will be uh, revegetation on sand dunes on North Stradbroke Island. There will be enhancements in our mangrove and intertidal areas. There are problems with noxious weeds and non-local uh, flora all throughout the Redlands, and all of these are perfectly suited to Green Army projects. Now, for the young Australians contemplating doing this, it doesn't have to be for a year. As I've said, these are medium-term projects, and you're working in a small, a small team with a supervisor who is paid the horticultural award uh, for that role. Councils have told me some of their concerns are around transport. Many participants won't be able to get to remote locations in my electorate easily where public transport is limited. So there will have to be a little bit of ingenuity and flexibility to make sure that these projects run without a hitch and that people obviously can be attending regularly. If you talk to young Australians, many of them say, I'm interested in doing this kind of work and I'd love to give it a go. So these projects have to be flexible enough to allow people to move in and out of them, short enough that they can actually see some kind of gain and benefit in the time that they're engaged, and variable enough so they're not just doing the one thing, the same thing for months on end. My objective from these Green Army projects is that young locals will come out of them with a new skill and a new qualification. And look, in many cases at the moment they're sent down to employment network providers and they glaze over computers as they're searching for the next training program to do. Well, the Green Army changes that because there's a real practical application. There's a real sense that not only did I gain the skill, but it actually made a difference here. And be that building a walkway or repairing some erosion or getting a better understanding of how some of these waterways work, that's got to be all upside, hasn't it? In a nation where our labour is so valuable, we are a small population economy with a very high average GDP and, of course, a large and natural expanse that, expanse that, that is often very, very rain-deprived and vulnerable. 
then there's no better place to apply Green Army initiative than right here in Australia. So I'm speaking from South East Queensland where we have incredibly fast population growth, probably only rivalled by parts of outer Sydney. And at the same time, we've got these environmental belts that locals have fought hard to protect, only to see them effectively fenced off, but not being maintained. They become a bushfire risk, they are covered in lantana and other noxious weeds, and they're not a place you'd want to take your family to go bushwalking or for a picnic. Well, the Green Army can change that. And so on the North Stradbroke Island, where 3,000 of my locals live, for the first time, there's additional employment opportunities outside of mining and the very good work being done by Stratty Camping. Here is a chance for young Australians falling out of interest with formal education to actually have this cadetship and environmental connection and time-limited projects that they can really make their own. That's what's really exciting. And of course, because they're teams of 10, you can run one or two of them before building it up that it becomes so large it's either unmanageable or the human resources are not well deployed. Make no mistake, this will be challenging all over this nation to be running over a thousand of these tiny projects, but I've got faith in local people, local employment providers and local councils to come up with the best possible projects and see them through to fruition. I know that there's been some nitpicking from the other side about workplace health and safety, and it is an important issue, but you're already being supervised predominantly by councils who are very, very well aware of these limitations and those concerns. In conclusion, please don't mix up the Green Army with Work for the Dole programs. They are very, very different. I believe in a great deal of pride around Work for the Dole, but in essence it is a hard stop measure where it is a requirement to be, uh, to be involved if you've been unemployed for more than a certain period of time. The Green Army is very different to that, and I would love to see university graduates, university students, uh, people even studying for a trade, taking a few weeks to be involved in a Green Army project. I'd be encouraging all of my young, uh, young Australians between the age of 17 to 24 to get involved. And I look forward to the day, once these projects are up and running, to have even uh, older Australians, those above the age of 24, to also be getting involved. It's an exciting moment to be seeing Green Army projects rolling out. For a long time, Green Core projects set up by the Howard government delivered significant uh, environmental benefits, but never really achieved the scale that we're attempting to do here. It is a real it is a real feather in the cap of the coalition that rather than going out on our own on climate schemes that in the end have left us cold and broke, that there's a real sense of practical action in local communities. If you really care about your environment, there is no better way of getting involved than encouraging people you know, encouraging people that are eligible to get involved in one of these projects in a team of 10. It makes perfect sense. They should be available. And I've made this point about matching need with expertise. We pay between 360,000 and 400,000 young Australians income replacement who are not involved in full-time work study or training. That's inconceivable that billions of dollars every year are paid more so in an entitlement than in a mutual respect arrangement where that transfer purchases a social outcome. And if we can move to that point where young Australians are actually earning that money by being involved in the development of public good, which is a cleaner environment, that is a great step in and of itself. If there's one thing that this government achieves in the next election term, I'd like to see it be the removal of the do nothing and have no chance option. The notion that payments are purely entitlements and that nothing comes back the other way. The notion that that payment is your pay, because that's not what it is. When we pay welfare to look after those who are in greatest need, we want that to be a hand up to give people a chance at a future career. Keep in mind, it's easy to look down at 18 to 24 year olds and say they're not doing enough and they're not active enough. But for many of them, they're transitioning through life having lost interest in formal education and prior to having a family. That is the time to give, these, to give these young Australians every chance at acquiring a skill, developing confidence and having a capability, because only through that comes opportunity. If we deprive these young Australians of opportunity, then we will carry them as a welfare burden for life. And that is not what we want. What we want is, at the best possible opportunity, as soon as they disengage from formal education and, and training, to get them back into something practical that they love and enjoy. So without going into too much detail on diverging too far from the Green Army project, what I am hoping is that there is flexibility. 
I don't want to see two or three projects that are exactly the same picking up sticks and pulling weeds. We need projects within a reasonable ge geographic spread that offer a range of skills that could involve learning how to use small plant or learning some basic uh, carpentry skills or concreting skills, uh, as well as the obvious um, environmental rehabilitation issues. If we can do that, that may mean spending a little bit more on good training and supervision and making sure that our trainers can actually impart those skills. If we do that and people leave Green Army with a formal qualification, then we have only made life and opportunity far better, not just for those individuals, but for their families that hope for a better life for their young children, who one day will become adults and income earners of their own. I commend this bill strongly. I thank the member for Bowman.